people during the course of their lives have an experience that can be described as uncanny or not susceptible to normal explanation. These glimpses into the world beyond the flesh can take many forms, a hunch, a dream, a premonition. I'm here today to ask people to recall their own particular experiences of this nature. Excuse me, sir. Oh, hello, Honky Tonk. How are you? Hello. Nice to see you. Thank you. I'm asking about people's strange experiences. How do you mean? Well, for instance, have you ever had any queer dreams? I never have anything else. Let's see. Excuse me, sir. Oh, hello. Have you ever had a premonition? Oh, well. A feeling that something was going to go wrong? Oh, yeah. It was last year, see. I'd just knocked off this big black car, and as soon as I got in, I had this feeling that something was going to go wrong. Well, why do you think that was? A couple of coppers sitting in the back. <laughs> uh, excuse me, madam. Miss. Oh, miss. Tell me, do you believe it's possible to see into the future? Oh, yes. I mean, I know I'm going to be assaulted by a tall, dark, handsome man wearing glasses. <laughs> Really? And yes. when will this be? Any minute now, shall we put that microphone down? Oh, it's... Well, <laughs> no, 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 I am! Uh, excuse me, sir. Oh, hello, chap. Hello. Have you ever had an experience that you are totally unable to comprehend? Oh, yes. Absolutely baffling. Do you know, I came home early one night, unexpectedly, and found my wife having a session with the butler. <laughs> well, I'm sorry, but I don't see why you think that's so utterly mystifying. Oh, you haven't seen my wife, old boy. <laughs> Uh, no, pardon me, sir. Hello, Very well, thank you. Um, tell me, do you believe in the supernatural? Yeah, not all. Any particular reason? Well, I picked up this bird once, you see, and uh, she came for a ride on my pinion. She turned out to be a witch. Good Lord, how did you find that out? Well, when she put her hand on my knee, I turned into a lay-boy. <laughs> uh, excuse me, Jack. Uh -huh. Can I ask you a question? It's Team White Chief. Do you believe that there are weird, incomprehensible powers that interfere in our lives without rhyme or reason? Yeah. We call them officers. <laughs> uh, excuse me, miss. Oh, hello. Hello. Here's a charming young lady. Oh, thank you. Tell me, do you believe in extrasensory perception? Oh, yes, I'm rather psychic myself. Can you give me an example? Well, for instance, when I first met my boyfriend, I knew instinctively that we were completely compatible. You mean you sensed there was something between you? <laughs> Pardon? You immediately felt his vibrations. You are awful. But I like you. <laughs> so it seems that we have all, at one time or another, experienced something that can only be described as strange. Personally, I have no doubt that there are more things in heaven and earth than are dreamed of in our philosophy. My goodness. It's not true. That's incredible. I ask myself, when will it all end? <coughs> oh, good morning, sir. Is this seat vacant? Yes, I suppose so. It's amazing to think that people have been walking up and down this path, and yet it was I who found this five-pound note. Your lucky day. Every day is my lucky day, sir. That's the fifth five-pound note I've found this morning. Do you mean to say you found 25 pounds just lying about? Hardly a record, sir. Only last Tuesday, I found a genuine pearl necklace in Hanover Square, and the matching set of earrings in Titchfield Street. <laughs> you make a habit of finding things, do you? I think I can safely say that Lady Luck and I are intimate friends. <laughs> well, if you'll pardon the observation, all this good fortune is scarcely reflected in your personal appearance. Do not be deceived, sir. I am a man of simple tastes. My wants are few. The open sky, the song of the birds, a small stream in which to slake my thirst. Ah, the flesh pots are not for me. Good thing you're easily pleased. <coughs> ah, yes. Another flotsam on the tide of life, a piece of flotsam. Come here, my good man. I wasn't doing no harm, Gov. Don't have me nicked. Nicked? Oh, nothing was farther from my thought. Here, take this piece of currency to the value of five pounds. Five quid? 
It can't be true. What do you want me to do for Simply it? Simply take it and use it for the betterment of your person. It's a sad comment on our times where the mere piece of paper produces such joy. That mere piece of paper, as you put it, was a five pound note. You found it and now you've given it away. Oh, that is the sum of my philosophy. He who steals my purse steals trash. I have no use for money, even though I draw it like a magnet. And how do you account for this uh, amazing gift? Oh, hardly a gift, more a curse. <laughs> Upon my soul, a Spanish doubloon. <laughs> A Spanish doubloon in an English Worcester purchased only this morning off a stall in Berwick Market. Do you mean to say you found that gold coin and that apple? What cannot speak cannot lie. But that's fantastic. Only another of a series of fantastic events which began 20 years ago on the Emerald Isle. I was walking through County Sligo and I paused near the village of Ballymore Doon in order to cool my feet in a nearby stream. <laughs> Are you with me? Yes, yes, go on. Suddenly I felt an excruciating pain in my big toe. <laughs> Evidently, a large pike had mistaken it for a succulent worm. <laughs> As I jerked my foot from the water, the fish flew over my head onto the bank. I rose to inspect the monster and was amazed to hear a cry for help coming from its interior. From inside the fish? I picked it up by its tail and forced it to disgorge. What came out? A small green man who informed me his name was Rory O'Hulahan, a leading light in the League of Leprechauns. <laughs> Good heavens, I didn't know such things existed. Ah, remember, we are in Ireland. Anyway, in gratitude for saving his life, he whipped his belt off and gave it to me. And I've worn it ever since. And you reckon that it's that belt that brings you all the luck? Oh, there's no doubt about it. At last! At last I found you, my benefactor. Do I know you, sir? Does he know me? Does he know me? Less than a fortnight ago, this, this angel in disguise took pity upon me. I was passing this very bench when he observed my destitute condition. He gave me 10 pounds. No one can't remember them all. That <laughs> was the turning point in my life. I took the money and I wagered it all on the horse. You Poor fool. I suppose you lost it and you want some more. No, no. It came in first at a hundred to one, and I've been searching for you ever since to give you back your share. Oh, no, I don't want your money. Give it to the poor and needy. Oh, please, but you must have it. I can't sleep easy in my bed and, uh, until I repay your generosity. Oh, well, if, if I must, I must. Oh, thank you. And goodbye, sir. And if ever you're down the Mile End Road, Feel free to pop into my new restaurant and have a salt beef sandwich. <laughs> you see, no matter how much I give it away, it's always returned to me tenfold. Well, what are you bothered about? Why aren't you happy? I've told you, sir, I'm a man of simple taste. The burden of money lays heavily on my shoulder. Ah, yes, yes, I can understand that. Well, why don't you get rid of the belt? Get rid of it? Yes, you could throw it away. Well, I could, couldn't I? Yes. I could help you find a good place for it. I could give you the belt, couldn't I? Yes, you could indeed. You couldn't do better. I'm probably the most generous man you've ever met. Yes, I'm not too sure, though. I, I wonder, would you submit to a small test? Anything. How, Anything. How much have you got on you? Oh, I should think uh, about 50-odd pounds. Would you give it to the first deserving passerby? Eh? Oh, well, yes, yes, of course I would. I'm always doing that sort of thing. Well, now's your chance. Ah, hey, you, you, here's some money. Hi. Now, go on, take it, take it, Ooh. go on. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> there you are, I did it. Yes, you did indeed. Well, here you are, take the ring and all the riches that go with it and use it well. I will, I promise you I will. Now, come along, where are you? Where are you? Wait. Oh, that was very good. A quick hey. 50 nicker, eh? <laughs> <laughs> well, genius college. I'll tell you what, if we go on like this, I'll be able to give up the job. Oh, no, I can't. We need the suit. Now then, places. We've got time for a quick one before the lunch. <laughs> right? <laughs> My goodness gracious Oh, me. no, you don't. I saw it first. <laughs> it's beginning to work. <laughs> it's beginning to work. <laughs> A bit 
of a mob in here tonight. <laughs> it's shocking. It really is. I've been waiting here for over an hour already. Have you really? You don't look as if you've got too many hours to waste. <laughs> I don't feel so good, I can tell you that. You don't look it. It's probably reaching its critical phase. What is? Your trouble. <laughs> you see, they, when they start breeding, that's when the trouble starts. There's no holding them. I don't know what you're talking about. I'm talking about your red and white corporals. <laughs> All rushing about in your blood. They have a punch up with the viruses, you see, and they go roaring about, tearing lumps off and turning your poor little skinny little body into a flaming battlefield. <laughs> well, I'll be all right when I've seen the doctor, won't I? <laughs> <laughs> Marvellous, isn't it, blind faith? You'd be better off at the vet. Easy <laughs> put you to sleep peaceful. Look, this is my first visit here. Yeah. He is good, isn't he? What at? Treat him. <laughs> first one to put his hand in his pocket to booze, are you? <laughs> yep, well, now I'll be up. Might as well stick it out. That's where you're wrong, son. That's his little game, you see. <laughs> yes, he waits till it's too late. Then the problem solves itself, you see. How'd you beat? Well, I mean, there you are, lying on the floor, stiff as a poker. People <laughs> flicking fag ends all over you. <laughs> but he can't do that. Why not? Well, it's his duty to save people. He's taking the hypocritical oath. Oh, yes, I'm wrong to that, yes. And there's his brother, you see. His brother? Yeah. What's he got to do with it? I don't like to say. I mean, I get up, add up for slander. Look, I want to know about his brother. Well, all I can say is it's highly suspicious. <laughs> what is? That his brother's got an undertaker shop next door. <laughs> oh, my God. Blood's thicker than water, you know. It's easy for them. Drop of the wrong medicine. Before you hit the floor, he's at the window hollering for the tape measure. <laughs> I can't believe it. It's true. I mean, at 50 quid a go, it's more than he gets on the National Health. <laughs> but, I mean, he's criminal. He ought to be reported to the police. Well, he has been. His other brother's chief inspector. <laughs> I'm getting out of here. I'm going outside to get knocked down. I'd be better off in hospital. <laughs> Good thinking, son. Funny how people behave in surgeries, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. <coughs> Hello? <laughs> Do that again. Do what? <coughs> That's my uncle Len to the T, that is. He started with a cough like that and ended up with singing in his ears. Oh, well, I haven't had none of that. Drove him round the twist, it did. Singing, 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 night and day. <laughs> I don't see what's so bad about that. When it was Des O'Connor. <laughs> well, it was only a little cough. Yeah, I grant you that. I'll tell you something. I wouldn't waste time doing the pools next week if I were you. Now, look here, I don't know what your game is, but you seem to be trying to frighten everyone away. Well, let me tell you, my wife and I have been coming to Dr. Brown for years, and he's absolutely first class. Well, I quite agree. Then why are you making these outrageous statements? Well, I'm just trying to do you a favour. Dr. Brown's away for the week. And who's going to, um... Another chap from Chelmsford. He's waiting for his case to come up. <laughs> what do you mean? Well, he's getting struck off, see? He's trying to make an extra few bob. Well... All I can say is thank you very much indeed for telling us. Well, that's very charming of me, thank you. You're a public spirited man. <laughs> Strong little swine, isn't he? <laughs> what exactly is this fellow being struck off for? Oh, I don't know. But I certainly wouldn't let an attractive woman like your wife in there alone with him. <laughs> Come along, Dora. <laughs> Two and a half minutes, not bad. <laughs> oh, are you the last patient? No, I'm waiting for somebody, Dr. Brown. Well, oh, this is incredible. I'm usually here till at least half past nine. Yeah. Funny how things happen, isn't it? Hmm. All right, nurse. You can go home. See you on Monday. What a stroke of luck, finishing so early. Yeah, there's nothing lucky about it, darling. If we hurry, we'll be able to catch the eight o'clock to Brighton. Come on. <laughs> Here, Lil, listen to this. A report from Ecuador states that a 99-year-old man has just fathered his 21st son. He was quoted as saying he wants to keep on trying until he gets a daughter. <laughs> <laughs> what about that, eh? For goodness sake, don't let Dad see that before he's had his breakfast. Oh, he turned green with envy. 
I swear you've been putting something in his tea. Yes, cantankerous old devil. Yeah. Have you noticed anything different about the old boy in the last few days? Oh, not particularly. Still, with you having a week off work, I've been rushed off my feet. Do you realise it's nearly a week since he called me a dirty lie about RAF Burt? Oh, Ernie, whenever did he call you that? The first time was when you said I do. <laughs> do you know, I reckon he's sickening for something. What, Dad? Not him. He's made of iron. All right, I'll prove it. What is it that sends him screaming right up the wall? Practically everything. No, I mean about things that I do. That's what I said. Practically everything. <laughs> What do you reckon he'd say if he came down and he saw me sitting in his chair, reading his and scrumping up his newspaper? Oh, Ernie, don't do it. He'd have a seizure. We'll see. <laughs> Morning, Lily, my darling daughter. Hello, Dad. <laughs> <laughs> Morning, Ernest. I'm sitting in your chair. And I don't intend to move. Oh, well, don't see why you should. It's a very comfortable <laughs> chair. <laughs> I'll, uh, I'll just go and get your breakfast, Dad. What's for dinner? What's for dinner? I'm sure I don't know, Polly, my dear. What? I may never know. <laughs> oh, it's turn a blinking crow. Well, it's, um, no news in your rotten old paper, then, is there? Oh, well, no news is good news. Here you are, Dad. Got your favourite breakfast, a pair of nice juicy kippers. Oh, no, thank you, Lily. No, I couldn't face it. <clears throat> Just think. Them kippers, not long ago, them kippers were two little fishes swimming about the ocean. <laughs> yes, we're all God's creatures, aren't we? Yes. What's the matter with him? I don't know. Perhaps he's got religion. <laughs> Billy Graham's not over here, is he? Here, give it to some passing tramp. He might like something warm in his stomach. Leave it to me, Lil. I'll fix him. Well, now, you old bag of bones. I suppose you're sitting here waiting for the spread eagle to open so you can go down and wallow in it with your senile old mates, eh? No. No, Ernest. I've long since given up the sins of the flesh. I know some old geezer in Ecuador who ain't. Uh, Lily, my love, would you be so kind if it's not too much trouble as to go and get me a glass of water? Yes, of course, Dad. It's no trouble. Yep. She's a good girl, isn't she? And you've been a good husband to her, even though you are a... Yeah, go on, Dad, say it. A dirty lay about R.E.F. Burke. Go on. No, no, no. I was going to say, even if you are a bit older than what she is. <coughs> Here, while she's out the room, I... Uh... I wondered if you'd mind doing a little uh, favour for me. Yes, certainly, Dad, certainly. Would you mind shining that form there where it says witness? Yeah, what is it? Oh, it's just something personal. Yeah, but I, I can't sign a form without knowing what it is. And, can I? I mean, you might be trying to get me um, certified, mightn't you? No, I wouldn't do that. <laughs> Come on, let's have a look at it. What is it? <laughs> I, James Maynard Kitchener Lempwick, being of sound mind... This is a will form. Dad! Yes, well, I was only trying to provide for my loved ones. That's he means it, you know. Oh, Dad, you're not ill, are you? No, no, I'm not ill. I'm just doomed. Hey? <laughs> Whatever do you mean? Well, <laughs> ever since last Friday, I've had this terrible dream. Last Friday? Yes. If I remember right, you was down at the boozer playing dance with your mates. That means ten pints of brown and mild, and half a jar of pickled onions. No wonder you had a dream. Did you see, I have it every night. The same dream, I have the same one. Oh, tell us about it, Dad, and only you be quiet. Yes, well, you see, it's, it, it's early morning, and it's all quiet, and the sun's streaming through the window. Yeah. And the, 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 the clock strikes the half hour. Then what happens? Yes, well, as I ring on the doorbell, and Lily's up at the table pouring out some tea and she drops the teapot. Well, why ever do I do that, Dad? I don't know. And then... <coughs> he comes through the door. Who comes in? All in black he is. <coughs> and he says to me, James... But well, he doesn't say it like that. He says, James Maynard, Kitchener Lempwick. I want you. What happens then? Oh, I don't know. It all sort of goes hazy. Who's the man in black? 
I don't know, probably the devil come to fetch me for all the sinful things I did in my life. <laughs> oh, Dad! What a load of stupid nonsense, all about a silly dream. I've never had such a load of codswallop in all my life. I doubt if you've even had a dream. You haven't had time. You spend all night running up and down the passage to the bathroom. <laughs> Don't you shout at him, Ernie. Now, look, Dad, it's all imagination. It's just in your mind, dear. <laughs> well, I can't get it out of me, mind. Well, I'll tell you what you need. A nice cup of tea will oh. make you feel better. <laughs> Real? I mean, it's just imagination. I mean, I, I can't not let him in, can I? <laughs> James Maynard, Kitchener Lampwick. I want you. You get out of it. You go back to where you came from. You can't have it. Go on. I'm afraid I don't understand. I was only going to say I want you to accept this check. For 75 pounds from the British Insurance Company. Your policy has matured. What? Here they go of me. <laughs> I've been saving up three a week ever since I got married for that. <laughs> what are you standing there with your mouth open for? Go and get me breakfast. <laughs> and oh, you get out of my chair, you dirty lay about R.F. Burke. Go on, get out. <laughs> Sorry, you feel unwell, Lady Glazer. Is there anything I can get you? Oh, no, no, no. Just give me a few moments alone and I shall be quite recovered. I think that last polka with the Russian ambassador has left me feeling rather dizzy. Yes, sir. I'm afraid the ballroom is rather crowded. But at least the charity will benefit considerably. Yes, I agree entirely. Oh, and now perhaps if you would excuse me. Oh, certainly, my lady. Thank you. with you, Archbishop, just as soon as I presented the Tom Dola prizes. Au revoir. A tout à Big up up. I didn't know there was anyone here. <laughs> That's perfectly all right. Do please sit down. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I, uh, I don't think we've met. Oh, then let me introduce myself. I am the Comtesse de Villiers Bretonneau. <laughs> and I am Lady Florence Glazebra. Delighted. <clears throat> oh, I wonder, uh, would you be so kind? Oh, certainly, yes. I always find it nice and refreshing, don't you? Oh, yes. <laughs> yes. I find these charity affairs somewhat fatiguing. Yes. But then rank has its duties as well as its privileges. Oh, yes. yes. Do you know I'm surprised that we haven't met before? Well, you see, I, I live in France. Oh. My husband's French. Ah. We live in Paris. Yes. I'm over here after the season with my sisters-in-law. Cows? Well, one of them is. <laughs> The other's quite possible. No, no, I, I mean the Isle of Wight. 
the yachting. Oh, probably. Yes, well, of course, the entire yachting scene has been given a new impetus now that our Prime Minister participates. Oh, yes, but there was a time when politicians knew their place, you know. <laughs> Quite. I was saying only the other day to the Duke of Crowborough. <laughs> I beg your pardon. What did you say? I, I was saying that only the other day I was talking to the Duke. No, 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 no. Before that, dear. Nothing. Oh yes, you did. You said, "Ua." <laughs> did I? Yes. And there's only one person I know who says that, like that. Oh, and who might that be? Florrie Burkett. <laughs> whom I last saw kicking her legs up in the back row of the chorus in a show called Bottoms or Bust. Oh, my God. I mean, oh, good heavens. Too late, love. Don't you recognise me? No. <laughs> Never. It is. Maggie Floyd! Yeah. It is! Oh. oh, I just can't get over it. Fancy you and me running into each other like this. I mean, it's weird, doesn't it? <laughs> Oh, this calls for a drink. Oh, though. right, yes. <laughs> I say, mm. it must be all the 20 years. Oh, get over, love. You're exaggerating. It's 30. Mm -hmm. Here. What? Are you really the Countess of what's it? Yes. Are you Lady Thing of me? Yeah, I yeah. I say. We've done all right for ourselves, oh, haven't we? Oh, we have, yes. And I thought you were going to take up with that horrible little stage manager. Oh, no. I was taken down for him, love. <laughs> Well, how come you got itched up with this French fella, then? Well, you see, I got this job, you see, as a nude in the Follies Bergeur. Oh, wow. And he used to come every night, you see. Pretty, yes. We used to call him Charlie Ogle. Why? Because that's what he used to do, Ogle your Charlies. <laughs> hey, yeah. Uh, Maggie, is he over here with you now? No, I didn't want to dig him up, love. <laughs> well, he was 74 when we got married, you know. He dropped dead dashing up the stairs on our wedding night. <laughs> no, he never. Yeah, I say, Maggie, yeah. let's have another date to the Jury de party. Yes, <laughs> we never could resist free booze. <laughs> Tell me about yours. Mine, well, mm. how shall I describe him? Well, sort of slobby, snobby, I suppose. Oh. I met him when he was a little cox. <laughs> <laughs> In a boat race, he oh. was cops of the Cambridge crew, and they was just coming under Hammersmith Bridge, and he was shouting, in, out, in, out, and then he got the boat. Oh, how would you mean? Well, he fell out the boat and into the water. <laughs> and I laughed so much, I fell off at the bridge. He thought I jumped in to save him, and he made me out of gratitude. <laughs> Here, yeah. do you remember when we were in that answer party during oh, the war? Yeah. Mm. And them digs we stayed in in Darlington. Oh, yes. That Mrs. Bantock. Oh, oh suspicious she old bag oh, yes, she, was. she was. Yeah. You remember she used to wait up listening for our footsteps in case we got one of the fellas from the band with us. Yes. Good job we carried them upstairs on our backs as a piggyback. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, we'd have never paid the rent. Oh. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we had some times, didn't we? Oh, we did, yes. Yeah. See, do you remember that girl, Nora? That tall girl? Nora? Yes. No. You know, the one who used to do the, used to do the weight lift, lifting. Oh, yeah. Well, she finally made up her mind, had the obligation, and emigrated to New Zealand. Mm. Last I heard, she was playing scrum half for the old blacks. <laughs> Into? <laughs> Me lady, countess. We're ready for you whenever it's convenient. Oh, thank you, Mrs. Griffin. We'll be out there in a moment. Thank you. <laughs> Maggie, it's been lovely meeting up with you oh, like this. Yeah. Here, why don't you nip up our place the weekend, eh? Yeah, and then we will really put one on, eh? Yeah. <laughs> in the meantime, noblesse oblige. Oh, I quite agree, Comtesse. I'll tell you one thing. What? We're giving a damn sight better performance now than we ever did on the stage. Right. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Well, that's your lot for this week. I'll see you next Saturday. Bye. <laughs>